half of the new specialist treatment centres promised by the Scottish Government to help cut NHS waiting lists are behind schedule. National treatment centres are a key part of the government's COVID recovery plan, specialising in routine care like hip or knee surgery. The government says four centres will open within the next year. Now let's get some political reaction to the story we've been discussing throughout the programme. Delays to the creation of some of the new treatment centres that could hinder Scottish Government plans to help the NHS recover from COVID. We did ask to speak to the Health Secretary, Hamza Yousaf, this morning, but we were told he's unavailable for interview. Well, let's speak to two of Holyrood's opposition party spokespeople, Sandesh Golhani, the Scottish Conservatives Health Spokesman, as well as a GP, and Carol Mockin, who speaks on health issues for Labour. Good morning to you both. Good morning. Sandish Galhani, it, it seems that a few of these centres may not open in the time frame that the Scottish Government was hoping for, although they say that work goes on. What's your reaction? Well, my, my, my reaction is quite simple. Are we surprised? Is anyone out there really surprised? This is an SNP government that's failed to deliver ferries, deposit return scheme, the R100 superfast broadband. Now, in health, we don't have enough link workers. We've got the longest a &E waiting times. We've got the longest ambulance waiting times leading to people dying. And I'm terrified of what they're going to do when they're trying to roll out the biggest change to the NHS, which will come with our national care service. And this is all leading to a simple, long-standing problem that Humza Yusuf simply does not understand the NHS. And quite simply, the SNP policies of not hiring appropriate staff, not having enough workforce is coming back. And this is exactly what we're seeing. This is a government, though, that's also dealing with the fact that the pandemic has not gone away. Hospitals continue to be under strain. And this is a situation that's replicated across the UK. You talk about ambulance waiting times. We've seen people queuing for hours outside hospitals in England. We've seen uh, waiting times missed there as well. Uh, this is a situation that all governments is deal are, are, de are having to deal with, isn't it? If, if we're going to, if Hamza Yusuf is going to blame COVID, then why did he disband the mobilisation recovery group where we, that was at the height of the pandemic, the profession coming together, trying to help? Why was that disbanded if, if COVID is still an issue? You've got to choose what you're going to do. And every day that passes, we are significantly adding to our waiting time. And look, there is a hidden 550,000 people who are still to be seen in outpatients. And in my surgery just yesterday, I got letters back from the hospital saying, well, the example I'm going to give you is a menopause clinic where we were asking for a patient to be seen in the menopause clinic and we were told due to uh, the waiting list and the pressures and the staff, we simply will not accept any more referrals to this clinic. So there is hidden thousands of people waiting in general practice to simply get a referral into hospital, let alone get seen. This is a problem that is leading to people having chronic pain, having chronic issues, and the people of Scotland shouldn't accept it. It's unacceptable. Well, Carol Malkin, from Labour's perspective, what's your reaction to the fact that some of these centres will not open as promised in 2026? Well, I think uh, clearly it is not a surprise. We have been challenging the government for some time about the timeframes around a lot that is happening in the NHS. But I think it's really important to think about it in the context that one in eight Scots, one in eight Scots are waiting on a, are on a waiting list in Scotland. So it's extremely disappointing and very understandable that people are very angry about this. Both patients and staff who are at the centre of the NHS trying to get their work done while the government are failing on many accounts around the treatment centres, around accident emergency, about around ongoing bed situations. So it's very disappointing and, you know, we understand why people are very angry about this. Well, the government says that four of these national treatment centres will open within the next year in Fife, Highland, Forth Valley, and one at the Golden Jubilee specialising in orthopaedics, which they say provides significant additional capacity for hip and knee surgery. And this all in addition to the National Eye Centre, which opened in November 2020. Uh, Aren't people, the public, when you talk about them being angry, aren't they realistic about the fact that we have had to deal with a pandemic and the NHS continues to have to deal with a pandemic? I think that the 
population have been very supportive but are now getting to the point that they understand that this actually has been going on before COVID and the government have acknowledged this. They've acknowledged that it was going on before COVID and that they haven't properly planned. Now, if we look at staffing and the huge problems with staffing in the NHS, we've known this for a long time and in Scottish Labour we have been trying to put forward ideas about how to tackle this. Well, the Scottish government say that... Conditions. Well, just the, government, the Scottish government say that they're supporting boards by investing £11 million over the next five years to build increased capacity through a number of ambitious recruitment strands. Uh, and this, they say, will support an additional 15,000... Uh, sorry, 1,500 staff uh, for these national treatment centres. What specifically would you do differently? Well, I think Scottish Labour have looked at how we properly fund a catch-up programme and in particular looked around workforce planning, about paying staff properly, about a comprehensive training and placement plan within the NHS and looking at workforces wider than just nursing uh, and medical staff. Well, if this 11 million isn't pay. enough then, how much is enough and where does that money come from? Well, I think we need to look at priorities. It's about priorities. And the government so you're going to take from one area and put it into another then? Which areas would you take it look, from? I think we need to look at the priorities that we have. Catch-up is definitely a major priority that we need to look at. Because so what is being prioritised at the moment that you wouldn't prioritise to pay for this? I think that we need to be open to the fact that we need to prioritise staff at the moment because the staff are prioritised and it's not just about funding, it's about the way we keep the staff, it's about the way we run the hospitals, it's about the way in which it's coordinated together and it's about the fact that the you know, the Scottish Government don't seem to understand how to actually move forward well, with the workforce or the Well, NHS. Sandish Gilhani, let me ask you the same question then. If you believe that the priorities are wrong here, how would you rearrange those priorities? How would you pay for the extra staff? Well, uh, what I think the first thing we need to do is look at the staff we currently have, and we need to keep our staff because they are leaving in their droves. GPs and consultants are leaving. Why are they leaving? Conditions? We need to improve conditions. For example, you cannot get a hot meal if you are uh, on night shift. You have, you know, you get this this horrible um, machine food that you have to get. So these little things make a big difference to the way that people are. Also, well, all these little things cost. So, so how do you pay for it? It's not that expensive. It's not that expensive to have somebody cooking, and what people will pay. It's not free. We're not saying it should be done for free, but we're saying it should be available. If you work a night shift, you deserve to get hot food. We also talk about pensions. People are having to leave. Consultants are leaving and not working extra shifts because of pensions. I have time and time again told terms of use of how to deal with it. We deal with it in the way that Wales have dealt with it. And we ask for the consultants to be able to choose which bit of their pay goes into pensions, which doesn't. And actually, if we do that, we'll increase our tax revenue. We'll increase the amount of money we take in tax. And that will allow consultants to work more and not stop working and not leave our NHS. And, my f and the other thing... Just Briefly, very briefly, if you wouldn't you, mind. I've said this to you already on your programme, is about our locum staff. What we need to do is, instead of spending record amounts on locum staffs, move that pot of money and say, would you like to be permanent staff? Because a lot of these people would love to be permanent staff, but because the NHS has silos of money which the government refused to make a difference on, we cannot use the locum money for permanent staff. Thank you both very much for speaking to us this morning. Sandesh Golhani from the Scottish Conservatives, Carol Mochan from Scottish Labour.